WWDC 2020 is set to take place this Monday, June 22nd, and will be an all-virtual conference, kicking off with the virtual keynote on Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Though there's no physical event this year, Apple still has some pretty big plans for WWDC. Along with the usual software updates, some rumors have suggested Apple could unveil a few new products. And so in this video, we're gonna go over everything that you can expect to see at WWDC 2020. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. So let's start off with some potential new products. And one of the biggest ones that could be unveiled next week is a redesigned iMac. According to Sonny Dixon, Apple plans to update the iMac using iPad Pro design language and will feature much thinner bezels that are similar in size to the bezels found on the Pro Display XDR. The iMac is rumored to include a T2 chip for security and controller functions, plus it will feature AMD Navi graphics and all flash storage, which would eliminate the Fusion Drive. We've also been seeing rumors about Apple's work on custom-designed ARM-based chips for years now, and at WWDC 2020, Apple may finally be ready to unveil its efforts and details on its plan to replace Intel's chips in the Mac. Bloomberg says Apple will unveil its custom chips at WWDC, but don't expect a Mac with an ARM-based chip right away. The first machine isn't expected to debut until 2021. Apple has at least three Mac processors in development based on the A14 chipset to be included in the upcoming iPhone 12 models. The first Apple-designed Mac chips will feature 12 cores with eight high-performance cores and at least four energy-efficient cores. There are also a few other products that could potentially be announced at WWDC, like Apple's long-rumored AirTags, which is a tile-like location tracking device that will work over Bluetooth and will have a built-in chip that lets them communicate with an Apple device, relaying the position of lost devices that they're attached to. Apple is also said to be developing high-end over-ear headphones that are rumored to be called AirPod Studio. The new headphones will join the AirPods lineup with the AirPods 2 and the AirPods Pro, and they will be Apple branded and distinct from the Beats lineup. And finally, for new hardware, it's possible we could see a new Apple TV since it really hasn't been refreshed in a long time. And some reports suggest a new A12X Bionic chip and a possible new remote could be well on the way. Fingers crossed for this because I would absolutely love a new remote. I am not a huge fan of the Siri remote right now. Moving on to software, this year we should see pretty big updates to iOS and iPadOS. And since an early version of this new software, which would be presumably called iOS 14 and iPadOS 14, since that leaked back in March, we have some pretty good insight on what new features we could expect. So just a quick note, some of the features that were discovered in that leak a while ago could have potentially been shelved due to delays surrounding the global health crisis. So just keep that in mind moving forward if what you here today isn't actually introduced, maybe it's just not quite ready yet. But with that said, 2020 might finally be the year where Apple allows its users to set third-party mail, browser, and music apps as their defaults instead of using Apple's own applications. So this means if you're a Spotify user, you can set that as your default music app over Apple Music. If you use Google Chrome over Safari, etc., you get the point. Hopefully that will happen. It's also possible that Apple will allow us to finally customize our home screens a bit more, a feature that's been on Android since forever. iOS 14 may offer home screen widget options, allowing for widgets that can be moved freely around the home screen, much like the app icons. A new list view for applications could also be on its way, giving users a list view style similar to what you see on the Apple Watch to quickly go through your apps rather than having them all jumbled around on your home screen or just stashed away in folders. And wallpapers could also improve heavily in iOS 14 with support for third-party wallpaper packs directly in the system settings menu. A big update to messages could be on its way as well, which would include a new Slack-like mention system so that users can tag contacts by using an at symbol before their name. In a busy group chat, this would be helpful and would make it possible for you to mute the overall conversation, but you'll receive a notification when somebody specifically mentions your name. Also for group chats, Apple may be planning to add multi-person typing indicators so that you can see everyone that's currently typing in a chat, obviously with more than one person in it. Apple might also introduce retraction of messages, which 
is a good thing, but also the user on the other end will see that the message has been retracted. That text would be visible for both parties, so something to keep in mind. And finally, Apple could introduce the ability to mark a message as unread. There could be an all new augmented reality app in iOS 14, which is designed to let users get more information about the world around them using AR. Based on code in iOS 14, the app could feature integrations with Apple stores and Starbucks. These integrations could let users do things like hold up an iPhone in an Apple store to see AR information about the products or scan a QR code to see detailed information about an object at Starbucks. Apple is also been said to be working on car key, which is a feature that would allow the iPhone and Apple watch to be used to lock, unlock and start a car that has NFC capabilities. Car key would let iPhone users use their devices in lieu of a physical car key, and it's a feature that could be coming as part of iOS 14. In efforts to keep this video short, I don't want to put all the little features that we've heard about, so you can go ahead and click the link in the description down below for the corresponding article if you want to see some of the other uh, leaks that we saw in iOS 14 back a couple of months ago. While there's a lot of information about iOS and iPadOS 14, the same, unfortunately, cannot be said for macOS 16, watchOS 7, and tvOS 14. For macOS, we really don't have a lot of new information at all about what we could be seeing coming our way, except for a few changes to the Messages app, perhaps maybe a Catalyst version, and efforts to make the app much more in line with the iOS counterpart, which would be great because the Messages app on the Mac drives me absolutely crazy. And other features rumored for iOS 14 that could come into play is a built-in translation for Safari, shot on iPhone integration into Photos, reused passwords in iCloud Keychain, third-party default apps, and wallpaper collection support. WatchOS 7 could bring in a new kids mode for those kids lucky enough to be sporting Apple Watch these days, which would include a new activity mode that will measure movement time instead of calories burned. To go along with this, Apple will add a school time feature that will let parents manage which, which apps and complications on an Apple Watch are accessible during specific hours. General parental controls will also be available. We also could see a share your face feature, which may allow users to share specific Apple Watch faces and complication settings with one another. For tvOS 14, it does look as if a fitness app might migrate over according to some of the leaks that we found in iOS 14. TVOS 14 could also feature a new permanent audio option for the Apple TV, with users able to specify the HomePod or another speaker as the default audio option without having to manually choose it as an AirPlay 2 target each time audio is played. Unfortunately, that seems to be all we have for those three platforms at the moment, but regardless, WWDC looks to be an incredibly interesting and exciting event once again, and I absolutely cannot wait to see what Apple has in store for us next week. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more videos like this one in the future, including some of our hands-on videos detailing new features about each of the betas that will most likely be coming next week. And so if you don't want to miss those, be sure to hit that subscribe button. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.